I'm Lisa Evers, and this is Street Soldiers. Fox 5 and Hot 97 present Street Soldiers with Lisa Evers. Dancehall is one of the fastest growing music genres in the world, and some of the biggest names in hip hop and pop music are getting in on the action. So, where do we draw the line between appropriation and appreciation? I'm in love with the shape of you. Ed Sheeran's mega hit Shape of You has broken chart records and been viewed on YouTube by more than four and a half billion people. But what many may not know is that it's based on a dancehall beat called a rhythm. Internationally known dancehall star Busy Signal says it's all good. But it's appreciation for me. You know what I mean? It, it, it gives it give us more exposure. It gives it give the culture, the genre, more exposure. Justin Bieber's smash hit Sorry is also based on a dancehall beat. So is Nicki Minaj's hit Megatron. While some see these successes as a positive sign of dancehall's growing influence, others have questions. Cultural appropriation has been a much heated discussion in the dancehall space. Ever since the rise of like Drake, Justin Bieber, Ed Sheeran. They take from our culture and make millions while we are getting little to nothing. And a lot of the times we don't even get the recognition for it. Hey yo, listen, me drop one big tune right now. Actor and artist Chet Hanks, son of Tom Hanks, stirred up the simmering controversy by speaking with a Jamaican Patois accent at the Golden Globe show, and then a few more times on his Instagram page. Me being part of the culture, but then, you know, representing New York and being a, you know, not born in Jamaica, uh, I think, Personally, like the first time is funny, but then the second time can almost, uh, to me, look like you mocking the culture. You could be disrespectful. I'm really still wondering what the whole hullabaloo is about because to me, he's just trying to be cool. Busy Signal says moving the music forward opens more doors for everyone. The world is more open to, to, to hear the styles are, 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 are here, whoever is coming with it, whether it be the Drake, the Justin Bieber, the, the, the Ed Sheeran, the, the, the whoever. There are a lot of different takes on the dance hall phenomenon. Let's find out what our panel has to say. Joining me for the show is Shams. He's a music producer and one of the A&R members at VP Records. Shams, great to have you with us. Hey, thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Also with us is Bobby Condors. He's host of Fire Sundays on Hot 97 and CEO of Massive V. Bobby, great to have you thanks with us. Thanks for having me again, Lisa. Thank you so much. Also with us is Busy Signal. He's a dance hall star, the very first dance hall star we have ever had here in studio for Street Soldiers. He's also a multi-genre artist with roots reggae, soca, EDM, pop, reggaeton, Afro Beats Trap, he's super multi-talented. His latest album is called Parts of the Puzzle on VP Records. And Busy, great to have you with us. Thank you for having me right Thank here. Thank you so Street much. I, I have to ask you first. Yeah. How did you get the name Busy Signal? Oh my goodness. I mean, I was just up and about, up and about trying to, you know, trying to be, just trying to know everything, trying to know what's going on, trying to be hands-on with, with stuff. And, you know, my friends gave me that name. You know, I, I'm too busy body. I'm just all over the place. So I just formulate that, you know, put the little signal on the end of the busy. And, we <laughs> and it's that. a catchy name, and, and it's just the rest is history. The rest is history. And, and it's like literally, I think it's good, you know, literally for me doing music and keeping up, keeping doing the work and, and, and just getting going. Now, you yeah. always are on the cutting edge of what, throughout your career you're on the cut you seem to be as I was looking through the the discography you are always on the cutting edge of what the trends are and then when this album came out you were like there was kind of a seven-year stretch and you were wait a minute I the mu the way people are listening to music has changed how yep. has that affected you as a, as originally a dance hall star I mean the, the, the evolution with, with what's going on in terms of the listenership with people and you know, the, 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 the listening is like people don't just sit and listen to one artist straight down the line anymore you know what i mean the attention span is just so small they, they, they tend to just skip or swipe next you know what i mean so i try to give them a whole bunch of different styles it's one album but it's a whole bunch of different styles so you don't get boring you know what i mean so i try to keep it up that way you know try to get get in their air that way bobby define for people dance hall well well that's that's kind of hard because dance hall to me might be different than dance hall to busier shams but in general, um, like what people would call dance hall artists. Well, it has to be from Jamaica, right? Well, well, I mean, there's dance halls in the halls in the communities, right. but then that could be in Brooklyn. But, you know, say Jamaica, what I would 
say dancehall is a, a sound that came from Jamaica that played in the dances. You know what I'm saying? And it could have been from the 80s or 90s. Now you have different forms of dancehall music with the newer sound out of Jamaica called dancehall trap. And then some of the elders from the dancehall older golden era, they would say, don't call that dancehall. So there's different forms of dancehall and different sounds of it. It can get confusing because some of the stuff coming out of Jamaica today may sound different than stuff six, seven, eight, ten years ago. Right. Some may, some may say dancehall is, Shams could even talk about this, some say dancehall is more of a drum pattern with a bass line, and, it, it, you know, it has a doom, 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 you know what I mean? That, that kick to it. And now there's it's different sounds of it. But, I mean, overall, most people would just say dancehall. They think Jamaica, they, from, from Jamaica. Jamaica. Shams, what about, what about the sound? You're a music producer, you're listening to all these sounds, creating these different sounds. Well, yeah, just to, to, to add to what Bobby was saying, because, you know, dancehall is pretty much, um, it's more of a feeling like, like a groove. Because, like, for instance, say reggaeton, for argument's sake, once you hear a reggaeton beat, you say, oh, yeah, that, that's reggaeton. It's the same thing with dancehall music. Um, dancehall has evolved over the years, you know, because what dancehall used to sound like in the 80s, that's not the sound of it today. But what I've observed... Um, regarding the evolution of dancehall is almost every time you have a Jamaican artist like a Busy or anybody as um, DJing or, or, or what we call rapping on a, on a rhythm or on a track from Jamaica, you know, that's usually um, coined as dancehall because sometimes you have hip hop beats. Because back in the day, you used to have Mad Cabra and Spraga Benz and even Shabba Ranks when he did his album. They had a bunch of, you know, crossover fusion type beats on it. But then the kind of dancehall because of the artist himself is from Jamaica and he's and then, speaking and that's in that the, dialect. That's the thing. Busy, what do you think about that? Everybody, please feel free to jump in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, that's the same thing. It's like you know, we j just like what Shams is saying and, and Bobby is saying is like, when the artist is on it, 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 don't, it don't even matter the beat anymore. You know what I mean? Once the artist is on that track, it's classified as dancehall. You know what I mean? Sometimes, mo majority of the time, is the beat. Is the beat because he got like inter international act on certain beat. And but with the sound of the beats, it'd be like, okay, that's dance hall. You know, you got Chris Brown jumping on something. It sound like, okay, oh, yeah, that's dance hall. You got Rihanna on something. You got Drake jumping up. You got Tor Tory Lanez and some stuff. That's that. You got Justin Bieber and some stuff. That's dance hall. You know what I mean? In terms of the beat. And then now, which it's just the sound. It's just the sound and the feel. You know, the way the way the way the groove goes and and and, and probably the artist himself trying to flow certain type of level of flow is just dance hall. And then have you had have you had op, uh, like feedback from people where they want you to stay in a certain more narrow dance hall lane as opposed to you know it, all of this creativity that you have and all these different genres? They accept my creativity with the with the yeah. Well that's I, what I, makes I, you busy. Yeah, too, they, they don't really have me trying to stay in a box with my with my talent. Well, I mean good. they accept they accept the um the creativity and the versatility ch me trying to spit on different beats or trying to do different styles. They love that. So I just I just be busy with that. All right. In terms of Bobby in terms of the, the way the music is now like we busy just mentioned, you know, Chris Brown, Drake, yeah, Justin Bieber, all so many pop artists have, like and people I think a lot of people would not to cut you I think no, a lot of people uh when they when they hear that certain song, even the Ed Sheeran and Justin Bieber song, they think of our original dance hall vibes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and it might even be unfair to artists coming from Jamaica cuz as soon as you hear a dance hall, they say a dance hall artist on a beat or a track Oh, it's dancehall. Whereas, like, It Wasn't Me by Shaggy is an R&B record, directly. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's almost the artist gets pigeonholed where they're doing an array of music. You know what I'm saying? Where then if you just want to say, you know, if, it, if, if it's the dancehall track or whatever, say say you, you come to a party, Master B's playing that. You know what I'm saying? You're going to hear a busy single. Say, boom, you come to Fire Sundays, you know what I mean, in Brooklyn or whatever, and then you hear Stay So Play by Busy Signal. Then... A straight hip hop person might just say, "That's a dancehall song." You know what I'm saying? Or if they hear, like, you even did commercials, right? Yeah. On house music, on and EDM house music, type EDM, stuff. EDM, yep. But then people would just be like, "Boom!" Oh, that's a dancehall thing. But in actuality, it's just Busy Signal's voice on the EDM record. Yeah. On a different so, beat. On a totally different you know, beat. Yeah. You know, there's this. It, there's so. I think dancehall, like, the, the, the dancehall music has influenced so many genres. When Shams just said. The reggaeton. Reggaeton come off of dancehall. Right. Yep. You know, now the big argument is, is Afrobeats really a takeoff of dancehall? Right, 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 you know, right. that's just the, you know, because Afrobeats is like the new flavor and so forth and so on. This is Street Soldiers. We'll be right back.
people having their own reggae dance hall classes in Russia. In Russia? In Russia. This appropriation thing, Bobby, when you hear this, you know, Drake a couple years ago got in trouble or caught some heat because he was speaking with a Jamaican accent. People defended him because he's from Toronto. There's a large Jamaican population. Then we saw this guy, Chet Hanks, at the Golden Globes using a Jamaican accent. People went crazy on Instagram and, and other social media about it saying, you know, this is a total disrespect. What is he doing? How do you feel about that? I think, like, as a foreigner, you have to, like, show respect to the culture if you're being part, trying to be part of the culture. And I think there's a line where maybe you cross, so you, you know, you shouldn't try to know that line. Now, obviously, some people, like that kid, the Hanks kid, is from a very wealthy family, I don't necessarily think he's been involved in the culture or the music. You know what I'm saying? So maybe one time might be funny, by the second or third time, but my man, you clowning. You clowning the people. You like so disrespecting, I, right? You know, so I think I think that that's just a, a, a like a humanistic respect thing. You know, now for the Drake situation, I think like some people felt like you know it, it, it was whack or whatever, whatever. He might be like Drake. Drake's different because now like if Drake is putting a song out with popcorn, like. He's bringing popcorn to a whole nother mega audience. Right. You know what I'm saying? Didn't he sign him to OVO or? Probably Supposedly, or whatever. You yeah. know, so I think, like, I'm sure, like, Drake is having fun with it. And he's doing it, obviously, from a business perspective because he's going to, it's making him cool in the streets. Right. And he's, he's going to eat off it. And it's making him cool because he got to be cool. Right. But I'm sh sure the popcorn got his think business organized it's it's a benefit for him too because it's taking him to a whole broader a whole different level, a whole, different level. Yeah. a whole cra a crazy level shams what about that yeah i mean my observation of the whole situation is that you know i believe once there's a cool factor to it i think that is the driving force behind it everybody wants to be in the cool you know and being jamaican is so cool because if you check the caribbean most most of the other Caribbean islands, the accent is so similar. Jamaicans have an accent that stands out more. And you know, when you look at the globe, when you look at the map, Jamaica is like this small, but yet still we have this big influence on the world. You know, everywhere we go as Jamaicans. So I think it's the cool factor that is the driving force behind it. And obviously, there is money to be made because then you wouldn't find like a Drake or anybody else, a Rihanna or whoever else trying to jump in that market. And everybody, but and everybody benefits though too, like like Bobby said. But busy when you when you see the I, I had the uh, opportunity to interview Spice yeah. a while back, which was amazing. And she said to me, she goes, you know, I'm looking to collaborate. I'm considering collaborating with a, a hip hop artist mm -hmm. who has nothing to do with the culture because she re she recognized exactly what your point was yeah. that this would introduce her you know, the huge star that she is, this would introduce her to a totally different audience a whole different in America. Yeah. How does that work? It's just the, the, the collab, you know what I mean? We get on the platform when, when we do that, you know, if we get the opportunity to do that, um, that collab with, with, with a certain artist or a certain artist with, with a different platform. Like if I do a, if I do a collab with, with, with like Celine Dion, that's a whole different world. If I do a collab with the Rolling Stones or, or Mick Jagger or, 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 you know what I mean? That's a whole different... And Major Lazer, that, did, that, did that change your audience or add more people, to, more that's, fans? That's, that's like an additional whole different thing to my, 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 my hardcore audience, you know what I mean? That's that I already, already had from just being Jamaican artists, you know what I mean, and just doing the culture. But that, that's like a whole different scenery, you know what I mean? A whole different style, a whole different list of people, a whole different audience added to my to my to, to my to my, my my music and my um my listenership what about the one you did with afro b off your album afro b yeah yeah the 100 percent real that's a whole different stuff with, with the africans and and like it, it's just it's just it's just it's just joyful and, and, and a blessing just to see how everything just the stars just align they probably don't understand what, what i'm saying but they saw you doing but the they thing saw you, they see me doing this and then when, <laughs> when the beat come on they're ready Busy in terms of the for the for the artists themselves. Yeah, is it because of the streaming shams point where there's like there's just there's so much more music out there, but we're also seeing a lot more artists on tour and a lot of the dance hall artists. I'm talking about dance hall artists going to Israel, going yeah. to Japan, go well, obviously all over Europe. All That's over. been happening, but everywhere Africa, like all these like all kinds of countries. Yep. 
it's like the, the people people want to dance people want to feel good people want to be entertained people want that upbeat people want to be feel people want to feel lifted you know what i mean some kind of vibe that keep them going you know make their day great make their night great make the, make their life great it's like and then when you got that upbeat to your stuff and and, and and got that music or that melody or that type of flow that people love wherever they are in the world people are just so much more open nowadays to listen to whoever come up with something that they like now you've been you've played in some of the, some really big venues internationally like the one in spain and like some of these yeah. ra around the world was there one of these stages that you went on you looked at the audience you're like going there's not a single jamaican person or a person of color in that audience yeah. and yet they know like the song they know every word they're every they're word. like they're buying tickets to come see you what do you have an experience like that you could share with us a lot i, I, I just i just um i just did costa rica like the 29 into uh, December I was shocked it was shocked it's like nobody like me was there or you spoke I mean? English right no, or spo or spe <laughs> no English speaking no nothing but they, they, they could sing the song they couldn't say to me hi busy I like your music in English <laughs> but they could sing the song for three minutes or, or like two and a half four minutes or whatever they could sing the song I was like and they, they celebrating, they singing along with the song. But when, when I'm stopping and trying to talk to them, like, hey, people, you know, put your hands up if you're going to listen that. You love reggae music, you love dance and music. They probably don't understand what, what I'm saying. But they saw you doing but the they thing. Saw you, they see me doing this, and then when, <laughs> when the beat come on, they're ready. So it's like, <laughs> it's I, great. I'm, 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 I'm like looking at it like and I was in Israel as well. Oh, I was in Israel last year. I was like, yo, this is, this is crazy. In you Tel Aviv? I mean? Yeah. People is just so much more open to listen and to enjoy themselves it don't matter it don't matter who is singing once you got that melody that that song that beat that they like you know keep them going they're ready to book you they're ready to listen to you russia the same thing you, people just want to enjoy russia yeah wow yes and that's got to be an incredible they, feeling as an artist learn, they learn the dance moves the everything <laughs> they, people having their own reggae dance hall classes in russia in Russia. In Russia. That's crazy. Crazy, crazy. That's awesome. Well, congratulations. Bobby, what, but what about also, too, there's, there's a certain, um, this, it's like that feeling of the streets, like the dance hall. It's got the urgency of the streets. It's got that vibrancy of the, of the streets. Do you think that's always going to be with it? I think music is a youth-driven business, and it's a youth-driven form, and whatever the youths want to take it, Kids could be kids in Jamaica, could be kids in Nigeria, could be kids in Russia. Anything can do with, with this press of a button in social media. Anything probably and possibly can go viral. But music is a youth driven business and they're going to take it where they want to take it. You know what I'm saying? We as elders in the business or whatever may like our genre. But one thing I can tell DJs, if you're playing and you're playing out, you better adapt to your crowd. Right. And if you're a little older than the crowd, know what the crowd wants, wants to hear. Don't try to force what you played in 1988. Right, exactly. And these kids want to <laughs> That'll hear be our next show. Something, <laughs> music, something music's different. generation gap. Yeah, that'll generation, be, a, yeah. that'll be, our, know, that'll be our next is, show. It's controlled by the youths, and the youths you know, will dictate it. Let Not me yet. ask you, Shams, because we're, we're up against the clock right now. Shams, in terms of the future of, of sounds, what do you think about that? Music is constantly evolving. So dancehall music is one of those genres that keeps evolving. And the funny thing is that the songs that we used to listen to at age 14, because I said that's the, the most influential age as a kid. 14? Like 14, yeah. So when you grow up, when you reach that age and the songs that you like, you know, y you're not going to want to be listening to the, the music that your parents listen to. Right. For argument's sake. So these 14 year olds now, 10 years down the line, they're 24 or whatever, then they will move to the next generation now coming up not going to be listening to that same kind of music so music and the sound will evolve based on what the next generation is, is, is would be attracted to i want to thank all of you for being with us thank for you. this episode of street soldiers shams great to have you with us thank you so thank so much that. bobby Connors, great to thank have you. you and uh busy signal thank you so much for big making up, time up, for up. us in your in your busy signal, busy, busy schedule. schedule. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank and you, thank you for joining me on this episode of Street Soldiers. I'm your host, Lisa Evers. Remember, use your mind. It's your best weapon. I hope it's your only weapon. Let's push for peace. <laughs>